Hello and good evening, everyone. My name is Mashru Ahmed Zidan, a sophomore currently majoring in law from North South University. And I welcome you all to NSU Talks Presents in collaboration with NSU Finance Club, the post-budget symposium powered by the Business Standard. In this event, we would not only be trying to enlighten our youth about the 50th national budget of the fiscal year 2021-22, but at the same time, we would also be calling for articles so that students get an opportunity to analyze on this issue. In the previous session, we talked about some important topics of education, corporate, and energy sector being affected by budget. In today's session, we would also be covering some of the important topics as well. Our session would be chaired by the Honorable Vice Chancellor of North South University, Professor Atakul Islam, sir. And we are also joined by our chief guest, Honorable Chairman of Board of Trustees of North South University, Azimuddin Ahmed, sir. Our panelists for this session includes Dr. Muhammad Shahzad Hussain Mahmood, Director General, Health Economics Unit, Ministry of Health and Welfare, Government of Bangladesh. We also have Dr. Rashid Al Mahmood Kitumir, Professor of Economics and Chairman of Department of Development Studies, University of Dhaka. And one of our very own alumni of North South University, Irat Kausar, who is currently serving as the current director of YGAP is here with us. I would also like to inform all our viewers that YGAP Bangladesh is an Australian company working with startups and the impact of investment industry in Bangladesh. Currently, YGAP has more than 85 ventures in its portfolio and has recently been awarded as the best accelerator program in South Asia. With that being said, I would now like to pass on the floor to our honorable vice chancellor of North South University, Professor Atikul Islam, sir. sir. Thank you, Zidan. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome our very renowned speakers, chief guest of this function, honorable chair of the board of trustees of North South University, who is a very successful businessman, a philanthropist, uh, a very highly learned person uh, as well. Uh, Mr. Azimuddin Ahmed. Our panelists, we have some uh, very uh, knowledgeable and high level panelists. To start with, Dr. Mahmoud Shadat Hussain Mahmoud, Director General Health Economics Unit, Ministry of Health and Welfare. Health Economics is a uh, big branch of economics in most of the developed countries. Uh, in Bangladesh, it seems that it's only started growing. Uh, it has not uh, achieved maturity yet. So those people who have been working on this extremely important field of health economics uh, are doing a great service to the community. Uh, let me welcome uh, Dr. Muhammad Shadat Hussain Mahmoud uh, to this function. Our other speaker, another speaker will be Dr. Rashid Al Mahmoud Timur, Professor of Economics and Chairman, Department of Development Studies, University of Dhaka. Uh, don't need any more introduction than that. We look forward to hear from you, uh, Professor. And our own alumni, Irad Kausar uh, of YGAP. Uh, it's always nice to hear from our alumni that a lot of our alumni are very successful uh, entrepreneurs on their own. And we have also a uh, new startup program within the university and new businesses spring up from North South uh, with the help uh, of North South. So uh, this is, uh, we keep close, sort of uh, keeping close touch with our alumni and particularly those who are in the business world. Uh, without much ado, let me hand it over to the members of the Industry Finance Club uh, to run the show and uh, uh, basically uh, make the necessary announcements and whatever. So yes. thank, you, to you. thank you so much, sir. I would first and foremost like to welcome our chief guest of the evening, Mr. Azimuddin Ahmed, sir, the chairman of Board of Trustees of North South University to speak on the issue of budget. Sir, please, the floor is all yours. Thank you. 
Honorable Chairman of the meeting or discussion of today, Professor Dr. Atikul Islam, Vice Chancellor of North South University, and our very distinguished honorable panelist, Dr. Shahdat and Professor Rashid. I am sorry, I am speaking, just uh, using the name in short of our respected guest and our very intelligent or successful uh, Alumni, Irad Kausar, and the chairman or president of the NSU Finance Club, and all those who are attending as a listener or viewer of this session, I say hello to everyone and also all of you, assalamu alaikum. It is a difficult subject to discuss on budget because Bangladesh budget is so big nowadays, it is difficult to elaborate which side or which sector I will take, take off for discussion. But I have a, a small write-up before me from my dear friends from this club. We speak on this occasion. So as I am not that way, Conversant with the discussion of the today subject, and it is almost uh, two weeks. Almost we are passing after the budget. So it was a hot discussion in NSU, and it was participated where participants were from different resource areas. So we are grateful to them and also grateful to the, uh, grateful to today's participants as our honorable guests. Good evening, honorable speakers, students, and everyone who is with us in this webinar. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for joining this webinar. Thank you for being with us. Budget is one of the essential topics of discussions and especially for business students. More specifically, students who are currently majoring in BBA in economics and, and, and economics. This particular topic is very, very helpful for them. It is not only enlightens the students and makes them understand the importance of the changes in the lives the budget can cause during this pandemic, but also enlightens them as active citizen of the country. The budget, however, is not only limited to the business and corporate sector only. It affects a wide range of industries such as energy, healthcare, education, to name a few. 
Besides this, this year's budget amounted to Bangladesh Taka 6037.37 billion, with public administration having a large share of 19%. Followed by education and technology with 16% and transport and communication at 12%. The budget allocation in some of the other areas include 5% in the healthcare, 5% in the agriculture sector, and 1% in the industrial and economic services. We have further seen a cut in taxes for made in Bangladesh products and a rise in taxes for imported products. All of this impact always for the business community in the country in one way or other. And I believe the following speakers will take a bit more in depth about this specific topic. I am not a learned speaker. I am not a knowledgeable speaker. I am not a professor or a uh, experienced person like Dr. Shahadat or Professor Rashid. I can only welcome them in this webinar and also thank our the organizers for arranging this very important discussion in this evening. Thank you all for joining here. And thank you all. Thank you, the organizers, for inviting me, on honoring me in this discussion. Thank you all. Thank you. Sir, thank you so very much for such amazing and informative words. Uh, it was truly an honor, sir, for, to hear from you. Uh, moving on, we would move on to our next speaker. Our next speaker is Dr. Mohammad Shahadat Hussein Mahmoud. Director General, General, Health Economics Unit, Ministry of Health and Welfare, Government of Bangladesh. Sir would speak on the very important topic of healthcare, which we are all going through in this pandemic, and the impact of budget related to healthcare. So, sir, the floor is all yours. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Honorable Chair, respected chief guest, prudent participants. It's a great pleasure for me to attend this very important session titled The Post-Budget Symposium, The Implications and Impacts on the Current Economy. So at the very outset of my presentation, I would like to express my thanks and gratitude to the organizer of this session, that is North South University Talks and the North South University Finance Club for arranging such a very important event. Uh, I've been invited to talk on impact of budget on the healthcare sector. So before going to my discussion, let me give my introduction first. I am the Director General of Health Economics Unit. Under the Health Services Division of the Minister of Health and Family Welfare. This is a policy advocacy unit of the government. My responsibility is to provide policy support to the government of Bangladesh regarding the issues of health sector. And I am used to do my responsibility based on the findings of various researches on health issues. We set resources. Normally, we organize different expert consultation meeting and workshops. And based on the recommendations of the experts, we are used to brief 
government on policy related issues for the development of the health sector. At this moment, the budget is a very important issue. Every year we face a lot of criticism for the budgeting. Normally it is said that the budget of the health sector is very, very poor. From the uh, discussion of honorable chief guest, we have learned that our health sector budget this year is more or less 5% of the total budget. But with due respect, I'd like to clarify some issues so that the misunderstanding will be removed. I mean, देखिए এবং আমাদের বাজেটের যে যে পনরটি বিরোধ খাত এই খাত অনুযায়ী যদি আমরা হেলথের বাজেট থেকে দেখি এই বাজেটের অবস্থানটা হলো ষষ্ঠ সর্বোচ্চ বাজেট অর্থ মন্ত্রণালয় দ্বিতীয় শিক্ষা মন্ত্রণালয় তৃতীয় সড়ক পরিবহন সেতু মন্ত্রণালয় চতুর্থ স্থানীয় সরকার উন্নয়ন ও সমবায় মন্ত্রণালয় পঞ্চম প্রতিরক্ষা মন্ত্রণালয় ষষ্ঠ স্বাস্থ্য মন্ত্রণালয় এটি সাদামাটা ভাবে যদি আমরা বলি অবস্থান ষষ্ঠ रेलवेट पुलिस स्वास्थ्य बजेट आमकी जन प्रशासन जो स्वास्थ्य बजेट आरोप सरकार स्वास्थ्य आलदा बजेट आब बजेट जो जो करी देखते पाई बजेटे प्राय दुई हजार कोटी टाइम समस्त मिनिस्ट्री ए विभागे आलदा भाव बरद देवे तरह अपने जान दस हजार कोटी टाइम थोक बरद रखा कॉविड सीचुएशन के मोकबला कर शिक्षार द्वित अवस्थान ष्ठ अवस्थान चले आसल द्वित अवस्थान एक कथा चाहिए बजेट कत बड़ देा हमारे बड़ विषय हलो बजेटी कतटुकू इफेक्टिवलि व्यवहार करते बजेट तो अनेक बस हलो क्यु एट दंड से बजेट प्रपारलि यूज करते अब्यवहित गल अब्यवहित गल से बजेटी खूब एक फलप्रसू हाँ जी विगत बच्चों बजेट देखी प्रति बचरे हेलते जो बजेट देखा तरह रिभाइ बजेटे टोटल बजेटी कतटुकू इफेक्टिवलिज करते मोस्ट इम्पर्टेंट इश्यू 
আপনারা হতে একটি বিষয় লক্ষ্য করেছেন যে আমাদের ক্ষেত্রে বাজেট ইউজ নিয়ে পত্রপত্রিকায় বিভিন্ন টক শোতে হরে হামেশাই অনেক নীতিবাচক মন্তব্য করা হয়ে থাকে কারণ হেতে বাজেট ইউজ করতে গিয়ে অনেক ক্ষেত্রে গভর্নেন্সের সাথে আমাদের অনেক লিমিটেশন ধরা পড়ে বাদেশের দাম পর্দার দাম এসব নিয়ে অনেক হটটক হয়েছে আমি এই ক্ষেত্রে বিনয় সাথে আপনাদের একটি কথা বলতে চাই সরকারের যতগুলো অর্জন রয়েছে সম্প্রতিকালে সবগুলো অর্জন স্বাস্থ্য খাত থেকে এসেছে এমডিজিতে যতগুলো সাফল্য আমাদের আমরা গ্লোবালি যতগুলো পুরস্কার পেয়েছি সব পুরস্কার কিন্তু স্বাস্থ্য খাত থেকে এসেছে আমাদের মাতৃমৃত্যু কমেছে শিশু মৃত্যু কমেছে গড় আসকল বেড়েছে আমাদের বাংলাদেশের স্বাস্থ্য খাতের অভূতপূর্ণ উন্নয়ন সারা বিশ্বের সমাদৃত হয়েছে যুক্তরাজ্য ভিত্তিক গবেষণা প্রতিষ্ঠান ল্যান্ডটাসের রিপোর্ট অনুযায়ী আমাদের স্বাস্থ্য খাতে আমাদের এই মুহূর্তে অবস্থান আমাদের পার্শ্ববর্তী দেশ ভারতের থেকে ঊর্ধ্বে শুধু তাই নয় কোভিড মোকাবেলায় আমরা যে সফলতার পরিচয় দিয়েছি সেটি আমাদেরকে অনেক উচ্চে অবস্থান দিয়েছে আমাদেরকে বলা হয় দি বেস্ট এক্সাম্পল অফ গুড হেলথ সার্ভিস উইথ লোয়েস্ট কস্ট এটা আমাদের জন্য গর্বের কিন্তু হর হামাসে তারপর আমাদেরকে স্বাস্থ্য খাতের বিভিন্ন নেতিবাচক মন্তব্য হজম করতে হয় একটি কারণ স্বাস্থ্য খাতে যারা কাজ করে যাচ্ছেন বিশেষ করে যারা ডক্টর্স তাদের প্রশাসনিক অভিজ্ঞতার ঘাটতি থাকে তাদের পিপিআর পাবলিক প্রকিউরমেন্ট রুলস অ্যান্ড রেগুলেশনস অ্যাক্ট এগুলো সম্পর্কে তাদের জ্ঞানের ঘাটতি থাকার কারণে তারা অনেক ক্ষেত্রে কেনাকাটা করতে গিয়ে বিপদের সম্মুখীন হন বিশেষ করে এই যে ইমার্জেন্সি সিচুয়েশনে কেনাকাটা করতে গেলে যে সক্ষমতার পরিচয় দেওয়া দরকার শুধুমাত্র প্রশিক্ষণ অভাবে তারা সেই দায়িত্ব সঠিকভাবে পালন করতে পারেন না আমি কোন ডাক্তার নই আমি একজন জেনারেলিস্ট আমি এই সেক্টরে গত তিন বছর যাবৎ কাজ করছি এখানে সেই বিষয়টি আমার কাছে খুবই বড় একটি সমস্যা হিসেবে বিবেচিত হয়েছে যে কারণে আমার এই ইউনিটের মাধ্যমে আমরা হেলথ সেক্টরে যারা ম্যানেজার দায়িত্ব পাব তাদেরকে প্রশিক্ষণ আয়োজন করেছি এবং এই প্রশিক্ষণটি জাতীয় পর্যায়ে হচ্ছে তাদের জন্য পিপিআর পিপিএ লিডারশিপ অ্যান্ড টিম বিল্ডিং ম্যানেজমেন্ট ইস্যুজ সব বিষয়ে তাদেরকে প্রশিক্ষণ দেওয়া হচ্ছে ওয়ান্স দে উইল বি ট্রেন্ড এন আফ আই ডু বিলিভ দ্যাট দিস শর্ট অফ প্রবলেমস উইল বি সলভ অটোমেটিক্যালি আমি যে কথাটি প্রশিক্ষণের মাধ্যমে আপনাদের কাছে উপস্থাপন করলাম সেটা হলো স্বাস্থ্য খাতে আমাদের যে বাজেটটি এই মুহূর্তে দেওয়া হয়েছে আন্তর্জাতিক এ অনুযায়ী ফর্মুলা অনুযায়ী সেটি হয়তো যথেষ্ট নয় কিন্তু আমাদের সক্ষমতার দৃষ্টি তাকালে বিগত বছরের বাজেটের দিকে তাকালে সেটি সন্তোষজনক ডাব্লিউএইচও তাদের প্রেসক্রিপশনে বলেছে হেলথ বাজেট হওয়া উচিত কমপক্ষে দশ ভাগ আমরা সেটি অর্জন করতে পারিনি ঠিক বাট যে হারে আমাদের বাজেট উন্নয়ন ঘটেছে আমরা নিঃসন্দেহে বলতে পারি এটি যোগান্তকারী বর্তমান সরকার স্বাস্থ্য খাতের উন্নয়নে অনেক বেশি আন্তরিক আপনারা জানেন বর্তমান সরকারের রাজনৈতিক ইস্তেহারেও স্বাস্থ্যগত উন্নয়নের বিষয়টি সুস্পষ্টভাবে উল্লেখ করা হয়েছিল যে কারণে মাননীয় প্রধানমন্ত্রী দায়িত্ব গ্রহণ করবার পরপরই স্বাস্থ্য মন্ত্রণালয় উনি ভ্রমণ করেছেন পরিদর্শন করেছেন উনি স্পষ্টভাবে আমাদেরকে অনেকগুলো নির্দেশনা দিয়েছেন আমাদের বাংলাদেশে স্বাস্থ্য খাতে যে ব্যয়টি করা হয় মাত্র সাঁত্রিশ ডলার মাথায় কিছু ব্যয় টোটাল হেলথ এক্সপেন্ডিচার পার পার্সন ইজ অনলি থার্টি সেভেন ডলার হোয়ারাস যুক্তরাষ্ট্রে যে খরচ করা হয় ন হাজার আটশো ছিয়াশি ডলার আমাদের ঠিক প্রায় দুশো ষাট গুণ খরচ তারা বেশি করে অথচ আপনি দেখুন কোভিড মোকাবেলায় যুক্তরাজ্যের সফলতা ব্যর্থতা দেখুন আমাদের সফলতা ব্যর্থতা দেখুন অর্থাৎ আমাদের আর্থিক সংগতি বিবেচনা করলে আমরা অনেক পিছিয়ে আছি সেই তুলনায় আমাদের হেলথের অবস্থানটা অত পিছিয়ে নেই সেটা সে কথা আমি জোর গলায় বলতে পারি আপনারা লক্ষ্য করুন আমাদের আউট অফ পকেট এক্সপেন্ডিচার নিয়ে আমরা হওয়ার সময় সেই নেতিবাচক মন্তব্য শুনি আমাদের দেশের জনগণকে স্বাস্থ্য সেবা গ্রহণ করতে গিয়ে নিজের পকেট থেকে অনেক বেশি টাকা খরচ করতে হয় আমরা এটা আমরা হেলথ ইকোনমিক্স ইউনিটের পক্ষ থেকে আমরা যে হেলথ কেয়ার ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল স্ট্র্যাটেজি করেছি এই স্ট্র্যাটেজি করেছি দুই হাজার বারো থেকে দুই হাজার বত্রিশ মায়েদের জন্য সেখানে আমরা দেখতে পেয়েছি স্বাস্থ্যসেবা গ্রহণ করতে গিয়ে জনগণকে নিজের পকেট থেকে চৌষট্টি ভাগ অর্থ খরচ করতে হয় সরকারের টার্গেট ছিল সেটি অর্ধেকে নামে আনা অর্থাৎ দুই হাজার বত্রিশ সনের মধ্যে সেই চৌষট্টি ভাগকে বত্রিশ ভাগে নামে আনা সে কারণে আমরা বিকল্প অর্থনের জন্য প্রস্তাব করেছিলাম স্বাস্থ্য বিমা কিন্তু স্বাস্থ্য বিমা মতো একটি বিষয় বাংলাদেশের প্রেক্ষাপটে রাতারাতি কখনোই বাস্তবন করা সম্ভব নয় আমরা ধারাবাহিকভাবে সেটা করার চেষ্টা করেছি আপনারা জেনে আনন্দিত হবেন আমরা এই মুহূর্তে টাঙ্গাইল জেলায় 
স্বাস্থ্য সুরক্ষা কর্মসূচি বাস্তবন করে যাচ্ছি এটি অনেকটা একটা সেফটি নেট প্রোগ্রামের মতো যারা বিলো পভার্টি লাইন পপুলেশন আমরা তাদেরকে বিনা মূল্যে স্বাস্থ্য সেবা দিচ্ছি পরিবার প্রতি বার্ষিক 50000 টাকা পর্যন্ত এই স্বাস্থ্য সেবা দেওয়া হয় থাকে একেবারে বিনা মূল্যে আমরা তাদেরকে সমর্থন করি বিভিন্ন ইন্ডিকেটরের আলোকে তাদেরকে হেলথ কার্ড প্রদান করি এবং তারা আমাদের নির্ধারিত ফ্যাসিলিটিতে গেলে বিনা মূল্যে স্বাস্থ্য সেবা পেয়ে থাকে এই বিনা মূল্যে স্বাস্থ্য সেবা তার ট্রান্সপোর্ট খরচ তার চিকিৎসা ব্যয় তার চিকিৎসা রোগ নির্ণয় ব্যয় সবকিছু তার মধ্যে অন্তর্ভুক্ত আমরা আশা করব ওদের ভবিষ্যতে এই প্রোগ্রামটি সারা বাংলাদেশে ছড়িয়ে পড়বে আমরা টাঙ্গালে তিনটি উপজেলায় শুরু করেছিলাম এই বছর এগারোটি উপজেলায় সম্প্রসারিত হচ্ছে পাশাপাশি আমরা ঢাকায় পনেরোটি ওয়ার্ডে আমরা এই আরবান এস এস কে বাস্তবায়ন করব এর মাধ্যমে আমরা স্বাস্থ্যখাতে মানুষের দরিদ্র জনগণের আউট অফ পকেট এক্সপেন্ডিচার কমিয়ে আনবো পাশাপাশি যারা চাকরিজীবী তাদের জন্য আমরা ফর্মাল সেক্টরে স্বাস্থ্য বিমার জন্য উদ্যোগ গ্রহণ করেছি আমরা অনেক দূরে এগিয়ে গিয়েছি এই জাতীয় একটি বড় ধরনের কার্যক্রম বাস্তবায়ন করতে গেলে আমাদের যে অভিজ্ঞতা দরকার যে দক্ষতা দরকার সেটি আমাদের এখন অর্জিত হয় না এই জন্য আমরা পাইলটিং প্রজেক্ট করব প্রথমে ধারাবাহিকভাবে এটি সারা বাংলাদেশে সম্প্রসারিত হবে এটি মাননীয় প্রধানমন্ত্রী নির্দেশনা এটি যদি বাস্তবায়িত হয় তাহলে স্বাস্থ্য খাতে আমাদের একটি ব্যাপক পরিবর্তন আসবে এ কথা আমরা আশা করতে পারি আমি হয়তো আপনাদের যে কোনো প্রশ্ন আসলে প্রশ্ন উত্তর দেওয়ার চেষ্টা করব আমি শুধু এটুকু বলব স্বাস্থ্য খাতে আমরা যে সমস্ত উন্নয়নের উদ্যোগ গ্রহণ করেছি আমাদের বাজেটে তার প্রতিফলন ঘটেছে আমি কতগুলো বিষয় এটি স্পষ্ট করে বলতে চাই আমরা স্বাস্থ্য খাতে বাজেট কত রেখেছি তার বাইরেও কিছু কিন্তু প্রবেশন কিছু দেওয়া হয়েছে বাজেট হিউজ তারপরে যেমন দেওয়া ধরুন নারীর স্বাস্থ্য সুরক্ষা নিশ্চিত করার লক্ষ্যে স্থানীয় পর্যায়ে উৎপাদিত স্যানিটারি ন্যাপকিনের উপর সব ধরনের ভ্যাট অব্যাহতি দেওয়া হয়েছে এবার বাজেটে আমরা কোভিড নাইনটিন টেস্ট কিট পিপি ভ্যাকসিন আমদানি উৎপাদন ও ব্যবসায়ীর পর্যায়ে ভ্যাট ও ভ্যাট অব্যাহতি বহাল রাখা হয়েছে আপনারা দেখেছেন অটিজম সেবার কার্যক্রমের উপর ভ্যাট অব্যাহতি দেওয়া হয়েছে মানসিক স্বাস্থ্য সুরক্ষার জন্য মেডিটেশন সেবার উপর ভ্যাট অব্যাহতি আরো এক বছর বাড়ানোর ঘোষণা দেওয়া হয়েছে করোনা ভাইরাস টেস্টিং কিটের কথা আগে বলেছি আর টি পিসিআর কিট তৈরিতে প্রয়োজনীয় কাঁচা মল আমদানিতে শুল্কমুক্ত সুবিধার মেয়াদ দুই হাজার বাইশ সালের তিরিশে জুন পর্যন্ত উদ্ধৃত করা হয়েছে হৃদযন্ত্রে ত্রুটি নিয়ে জন্মগ্রহণকারী শিশুদের চিকিৎসায় ব্যবহৃত ইমপ্লান্টেবল অঙ্কুডার আমদানিতে শুল্কমুক্ত সুবিধা দেওয়ার প্রস্তাব এসেছে এবার বাজেটে ওষুধ শিল্পের সুরক্ষায় স্থানীয়ভাবে ইপিআই উৎপাদনের জন্য কিছু কাঁচা মাল বিদ্যমান রেহাদি সুবিধার অন্তর্ভুক্ত করা হয়েছে আপনারা জানেন যে এই মুহূর্তে বাংলাদেশের ঔষধ পৃথিবীর একশো ত্রিশটি দেশে আমরা রপ্তানি করছি এটা সম্ভব হয়েছে বর্তমান সরকারের এই জাতীয় প্রণোদনা দেওয়ার ফলে সর্বমোট তিনশো পঞ্চাশ কোটি টাকা ব্যয়ে সারা দেশে একশোটি সেন্ট্রাল অক্সিজেন লাইন স্থাপন করা হয়েছে ইতিমধ্যে এবং ইতিমধ্যেই জরুরি কোভিড পরিস্থিতি মোকাবেলার জন্য স্বাস্থ্য খাতে নতুন করে দুই হাজার চিকিৎসক চার হাজার নার্স এগারো হাজার টেকনোলজিস্ট চারশো নয় জন জুনিয়র কনসালটেন্ট সহ সতেরো হাজার জন্য মান করা হয়েছে নিয়োগ করার ঘোষণা দেওয়া হয়েছে বিগত বিসিএস আপনারা দেখেছেন একটা বিশ্বাসে দুইবার চিকিৎসক নিয়োগ করা হয়েছে যারা প্রথম ধাপে নিয়োগ পেল যেহেতু আমাদের অধিক চিকিৎসক দরকার ছিল পরবর্তীতে আরও কিন্তু দুই হাজার অতিরিক্ত চিকিৎসক নিয়োগ করা হয়েছে সরকারের আন্তরিকতা কোনো ঘাটতি নেই আমি একটি পরিসংখ্যান শুধু দেব আমরা স্বাস্থ্য অর্থনীতি ইউনিটের পক্ষ থেকে এই চলমান কোভিড পরিস্থিতিতে একটি গবেষণা করেছি ঢাকা শহরের প্রধান চারটি হাসপাতালে কোভিড রোগীদের স্বাস্থ্য সেবায় কত টাকা ব্যয় করা হয়েছে আমরা গত বছর মার্চ থেকে ডিসেম্বর এই দশ মাস মেয়াদি সময়ের একটি পরিসংখ্যান নিয়েছি আমরা দেখেছি যারা কোভিড নিয়ে হাসপাতালে চিকিৎসা এসছেন যাদের জন্য আইসিউ সেবা দরকার হওয়া নাই তাদের জন্য সরকার খরচ করেছে পার হেড এক লক্ষ আটত্রিশ হাজার কোটি টাকা আর যাদেরকে আইসিউ দিতে হয়েছে তাদের জন্য সরকারের খরচ হয়েছে চার লক্ষ আট হাজার কোটি আট আট হাজার কোটি টাকা পার পেশেন্ট চার লক্ষ আট হাজার মাইন্ডেড আর যাদের আইসিউ লাগে নাই তাদের বেলায় এক লক্ষ আটত্রিশ হাজার পার পেশেন্ট খরচ এটি বাংলাদেশের মতো একটি দেশ যেটি সম্প্রতি লিস্ট ডেভেলপ কান্ট্রি থেকে ডেভেলপিং কান্ট্রির কাতারে উঠে এসছে এটি নিঃসন্দেহে অভাবনীয় সরকার কিন্তু সেই কাজটি করে যাচ্ছে বলতে গেলে বাংলাদেশের স্বাস্থ্যসেবা সরকারিভাবে 
একেবারেই বিনা পয়সায় দেওয়া হচ্ছে নামমাত্র একটি ফি নেওয়া হচ্ছে এই ফিটি এতই কম এটা ধর্তব্যের মধ্যে পড়ে না অর্থাৎ যে বাজেট আমাদের দেয়া হয়েছে সরকার যেভাবে সেটা ইউজ করছে এবং সরকার যে পরিকল্পনা গ্রহণ করেছে সবগুলোকে যদি আমি সত্যিকার অর্থে বিবেচনা করতে চাই আমি ব্যক্তিগতভাবে শুধুমাত্র আমি স্বাস্থ্য খাতে কাজ করি বিধে না এই দেশের একজন নাগরিক হিসেবে আমি বলতে পারি দিস ইজ রিয়েলি ভেরি স্যাটিসফ্যাক্টরি আমি আগে বলেছি আমাদের সক্ষমতাটা বাড়াতে হবে কারণ প্রতি বছর আমরা স্বাস্থ্য খাতের বাজেটের নয় থেকে দশ ভাগ অবিহিত রাখি এবং যে টাকাটা ব্যয় করি সেক্ষেত্রে অনেক ক্ষেত্রে আমরা স্মার্টলি ইউজ করতে পারি না ইফিসিয়েন্টলি ইউজ করতে পারি না দক্ষতাটা বৃদ্ধিটা বোধ হয় বাজেটের পরিমাণ থেকে বেশি গুরুত্বপূর্ণ আমি বারবার একটি কথাই বলবার চেষ্টা করছি সেটা হলো আগে দক্ষতা বৃদ্ধি করতে হবে তারপর বাজেটের পরিমাণটা বাড়াতে হবে এই মুহূর্তে বাজেটের পরিমাণ যদি এর থেকে বাড়ানো হয় তাহলে সেটি অপব্যবহার হবে আমাদের এই মুহূর্তে যে বাজেটটি দেওয়া হয়েছে আমি জোর গলায় বলতে পারি দিস ইজ রিয়েলি স্যাটিসফ্যাক্টরি অ্যান্ড ওয়ে আর রিয়েলি ভেরি হ্যাপি ফর গিভিং আজ এ ভেরি বিগ বাজেট ইন হেলথ সেক্টর উইথ দিস ফিউ ওয়ার্স আমি এ পর্যায়ে আমি আমার বক্তব্য ইতি জানছি আমার বক্তব্যের প্রেক্ষিতে যদি কারো কোনো প্রশ্ন থাকে আই উল বি হ্যাপি টু আনসার দ্য কোশ্চেন Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shnadar, sir. I think that was a very, very informative speech. A lot of our students actually wanted to know uh, the health care and the budget and how impactful it has been. So certainly it has been a very, very good speech. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shnadar, sir, for giving such informative speech. Uh, now, I think I would like to welcome our next speaker. Our next speaker is Dr. Rashid Al Mahmood, uh, Professor of Economics and Chairman of Department of Development Studies, University of Dhaka. Sir would also be giving a very, very informative speech on a particular aspect of budget. So, sir, I would now like to give the floor to you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair, Professor Atikul Islam, the Vice Chancellor of the University. I'm the chair of the NSU Trust, Mr. Azimuddin Ahmed. Thank you, NSU Talk, NSU Finance Club members for inviting me to this post-budget symposium. Fellow panelists, Dr. Shahadat Hussain Mahmood, NSU alumnus, Irat Kausar, the listeners and viewers. We are living in an unprecedented time. In the wake of a global pandemic, the people have expected the budget to be people's well-being center. Anticipations regarding its focus was on protection of lives and livelihoods. Healthcare and social protection have been at the core. Besides, they also have waited for a comprehensive roadmap for restoration, recovery, and restructuring of the economy. The untold anxieties through the minds of the people revolve around well-being larger than economic growth itself. The pandemic has brought to the forefront the inquiries into the nature of growth, the mode of achieving growth, and whom the growth will cater for. Therefore, I'll not discuss the sectors, not the heads, rather limit the discussion on the central macroeconomic question, which is be also being discussed worldwide. Is Bangladesh heading towards a divergent recovery? The IMF, International Monetary Fund, has termed it dangerous divergence. While I call the two-track process a K-shaped pathway, borrowing the English alphabet to illustrate the case. Though, as an optimist, my numerous articles and writings have focused on active restraints to avert the K-shaped recovery. The real challenge facing, the, facing us today are the incomes are eroding, jobs are insecure, poverty is mounting, mounting, uh, inequality is escalating, unemployment is worsening, and control over life is weakening amidst the uncertainties posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. While we in Bangladesh is in the midst of second wave battling with new variants. As we know, the first wave of the virus struck in March 2020, after which the country entered a two-month general holiday, halting economic activities almost all levels. This shifts, however, impacted different groups of people disproportionately and worsened the conditions of marginalized section of the population, low-income households, informal sector, women, children, elderly, and people with disabilities. Households faced income erosion, loss of employment, small business closed down, 
farmers fail to market their produce, opted for distress sell. The ERP submerged in uncertainty and healthcare structure crumbled. As you are aware, the economy had been in distress before the strike of the pandemic with jobless growth, slowed down poverty reduction, declined export import, and unfulfilled targets of revenue collection. More worrying than health shock is the uneven vaccination rates amongst countries globally. The headline grabbing G7 promises of a billion doses actually involves 870 million doses, far short of 11 billion needed. Some of these involves double counting, 130 million was previously placed to COVAX, the arrangement to, which is supposedly to ensure equitable vaccine access. Supplies will be there after their domestic vaccination programs are largely done. The European Union secured 3 billion doses or 6.6 .6 per person, while the US got 1.3 billion for five each. Canada got 450 million for 38 million people. 12 each. The UK over 500 million, that is 8 each. And Australia 170 million for 25 million or 7 each. On the other hand, Bangladesh to date has received vaccine doses for only 4.6% of its population. The budget proposed an ambitious plan of vaccinating 80% of the population, but the rate of vaccination of 2.5 million per month mentioned in the budget will take almost four years. Shall we wait that long? Coming back to different pathways of recovery, we have heard of P, I, W, L, etc. shifts. A K-shaped recovery occurs in a post-recession period when different parts of an economy recover at different rates, times, or magnitude. There is a widespread concern that developing countries in the Asia-Pacific region may follow a K-shaped recovery in the post-COVID-19 period because of the marginalization of poorer populations and vulnerable groups in the post-pandemic recovery and transition period, as my research for UN SCAP suggests. The K-shaped recovery path consists of two diverging arms of the later K. The upper arm indicates how wealth is concentrated the lower arm indicates how wealth concentration is declining for many small businesses and informal sectors losing out due to the prolonged economic shutdown. Around the world, the COVID-19 economic crisis has prompted governments to actively resort to two instruments of economic policies, fiscal expansion and B, East credit, to stabilize and boost the economy. Drawing on thoughts such as func functional finance, these policies are governed by the notion of deficit spending for boosting aggregate demand, aka Keynesianism. Governments opted for policies for dishing out money for both households and firms, expecting to raise aggregate demand, a la the modern monetary theory and expansionary fiscal policy. These points to the question whether fiscal expansion and eased credit have been effectively incorporated in the pandemic response and recovery policies in Bangladesh to stave up the fallouts and promote equalizing and inclusive recovery, particularly while we are celebrating our golden anniversary with the motto, with the foundation pillars of our war of liberation of equality, social justice, and human dignity. Coming up as a struck dissimilarity, the national budget 2021 2022 laid out reductions and exemptions in taxation and downsized allocation in the social sector. It seems to be drawing from the age old orthodox Ricardian equivalence or the Laffer curve. The Ricardian equivalence suggests that current tax cuts translated into future taxes will have an equivalent effect of, on the economy. The Laffer curve postulates that an increase in tax cut will lead to higher tax revenue. Unfortunately, the tax GDP ratio has declined in Bangladesh, while the financing of the budget has to depend on a regressive tax, VAT. While we all want to see a shift towards progressive taxation with income tax becoming the top source of revenue and moving away from tax avoidance, 
and evasion towards a larger tax base as the millions can be brought under the net. The budget has followed at least two textbook fiscal conservative mechanisms, which has been outdated in countries of origin. A reduction of public spending, no matter the size or condition of the poor population, and B cut in taxes. Government has remained conservative in spending in social sector at a time when recovery successful governments across the world have disbursed direct cash transfer to offset the income loss. Another mechanism of the orthodox supply side economics was visible through reduction and exemption of taxes. Besides cuts in corporate taxes for two consecutive years, it announces tax exemption for several projects such as made in Bangladesh. The tax cut largesses, however, is not as bountiful to cottage, micro, small and medium enterprises that have received debt finance stimulus at a slower rates of disbursement than larger export oriented industries, despite being the major employer of the labor, labor force as a whole. Similar to uh, cottage micro and small and medium enterprises, the agriculture sector also experienced a sluggish growth. Low allocation and disbursement of the stimulus is also evident. While large industries attain 85% of the allocation, farmers were able to attain only 58% of their allocated stimulus package. The lower allocation in health care and education sector during a time when both the sectors have been worsted may have risen an eyebrow on the aims of the budget for protecting lives and livelihoods of all system, citizens. Social safety net schemes have expanded beneficiaries while little significant change is observable in allocation. Let's integrate the new poor population. The qualitative change promised by the finance minister may not be a reality as the expansion of allocation in absolute terms does little to solve the high inclusion and exclusion error of social safety nets. The countries that are exhibiting faster recoveries carried out cash benefit programs which delivered money to the population who have seen a fall in income. Bangladesh initiated a cash transfer project but has been blocked by institutional inefficiencies. Government planned to transfer up of cash reached only 3.5 million households out of 5.5 million households. The expanded packages also announced last week during the shutdown would fall short of reaching the households who have been pushed to poverty during the pandemic due to a lack of a database. A national poverty registry which has not been materialized even after initiation uh, after seven years would have allowed transfer of the cash. A universal social security program involving at least a set of seven measures, uh, which may include universal pension and allowance, job seekers allowance, disability living allowance, child be benefit allowance, housing benefit allowance, income support allowance, health allowance can be initiated as a baseline. Nevertheless, the conservative approach exhibits a distinctive peculiarity. The neoliberals argue for diminishing the size of the government. Yet public sector salaries have occupied a large share of government spending over the years with a year on year rise. Conservatives also prefer efficiency to equity. Yet the budget continues to augment allocations for mega projects known for their cost overruns. What this indicates, a weird fiscal conservatism, the desire for affording patronage amongst networks leading to a clientelistic fiscal conservatism. One of the shortcomings of the pandemic response in Bangladesh was the possibility of a second or potentially third waves. These waves were not accounted for. The pandemic is worsening the poverty in the country, though the national agency Tasked to provide statistics, the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics has not released any report after an initial one. Reasons are not known to us. This is of particular importance since we all want to see Bangladesh graduating out of LDC status when we are celebrating our golden jubilee. This also leaves a daunting challenge for achieving the 
as disease. The budget proposals are ideally to have been driven by data without the risk of diminished legitimacy. However, some statistics are as old as five years, while others leaving scope for overestimation. There could have been proposal for quarterly GDP estimate as it is practiced in the leading and emerging economies and a promise for monthly statistics on vital areas such as labor market participation. This would have allowed the driver to know the speed and the velocity of the economy. Crisis have always paved the way for reforms beyond conventional wisdom. An alternative to the conventional framework can be envisioned upon, to my mind, four pillars of respite from COVID-19 crisis, relief, rehabilitation, recovery, and reconstruction. These policies would, have, would be, for example, in instituting a full-fledged universal life cycle-based national social security system, MSMEs require fiscal support than just debt financing, a restructuring strategy for women, informal sector workers, and youth to ensure a decent living for all, increased investment towards universal education and healthcare, mission-oriented policies such as technological catching up, particularly in these days of fourth industrial revolution to enhance productivity and gain competitiveness. These could create multiplier effects as well as an accelerate growth. A nationwide rural area regeneration industrial scheme is also a good candidate. Transformative production pathway for a green, safer, and better planet for all is cry of the day. Finally, for transformation of an economy entails an active citizenship as a sufficient condition, which can ensure command over authorities and public resources. Only then, public finance transforms to be of the public, by the public, and for the public. I'll end by th thanking you all, and with an urge that we need creative people like you who would embrace what Robert Frost once written, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Professor Rashid, sir, for such a powerful and informative speech and for touching literally every aspect of the budget. Thank you so very much, sir, uh, for such an informative speech. Uh, now I would be moving on to our very own alumni, Irad Kausar Bhaya, who is currently serving as the country director of IGAP to speak on the startups and the SMEs who have been affected by the ongoing budget. Irad Kausar the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me. It's actually a proud moment for myself uh, to bear the flag of NSU in the startup scene. And last year, we became the best accelerator program in South Asia. In the process, we had to beat Cisco Launchpad from India. So uh, it's today, it's an honor. Like in my first time, in my life, I have sp I've spoken in different platforms, but this is the first time I'm speaking on an NSU platform. So this is a very, very proud moment for myself as well. So honorable chairman, sir, and honorable VC, sir, assalamu alaikum. And I, my respect to our professor Itumi and Dr. Shahdat. And thank you to NSU Talks and uh, NSU Finance Club for inviting me. Uh, in our opinion, uh, from the startup ecosystem of Bangladesh, I will focus on my uh, points totally for what's in it in this national budget of 2021 and 22 uh, for the startups, particularly for the startups, for the innovators, and for the youth. Those are the uh, spaces I would like to focus. But before going diving into that, I would like to express what is our understanding, that where does this budget focus? We see that it focuses on the large businesses, uh, heavily on the social safety net, which is a very good thing for us, foreign currency earnings, and also the health. The tool that we see has been used all across this budget is tax reduction. And for ideology, 
uh, we have seen that the government uh, wants to move uh, from the agro-based economy towards the production-based economy. That's a very good thing. They want to focus on the ease of doing business, where as a country we're struggling. We want to integrate green economy. That's also a very big thumbs up. But in the entire budget presentation, we have seen entrepreneurship mentioned only once. And, and it was under the reformation and governance portion. And skill development was also mentioned once. Uh, it was also under the reformation and governance uh, portion. That, to my opinion, is alarming. I think that skill development and entrepreneurship should have a separate chapter under the budget. So if we, if we get into what is the impact or effect and what do we have in this budget for the startups, I have six points. The first thing which is very um, encouraging is the, again, tax exemption for 10 years in the industries for uh, agro production and machineries. That's, a, that's actually a very good thing because from our portfolio companies, we have 85 portfolio companies in YGAP. Uh, we have seen that entrepreneurs who are situated in the North Bengal, they, a lot of them has taken up uh, processing and packaging of uh, fruits in the summer season. And as due to pandemic, there were lockdowns, they utilized other startups, particularly logistic startups, to supply those fruits packages directly to the customer's home. So that became a direct farmer to the customer. Out of, uh, out of all of a sudden, they are taking the advantage of the lockdown and initiating this process. So these startups are coming back to us and they are asking us if we can help them to understand the compliance of exporting fruits, compliance for packaging fruits for export orientation. So now the startups were aiming for the export of fruits to the international market, particularly the Middle Eastern and the European markets. With this policy of budget in place that the 10 years of tax uh, exemption for agriculture products and machineries, this is going to be a very big boost for agro processing based startups. My second point, it's the tax exemption for the small and medium enterprises run by women. That is also a big thing because in our, during the pandemic since last year, for the last two years, we ran a survey on 140 startups, which at least had one woman co-founder. And there we found that if you have at least one member on your board, uh, if you're a three member board, and if you have one member who is a female, that company is more resilient. And those companies had the most uh, highest of job security. This is very encouraging. So the data we have and the policy that came out that the uh, women-led enterprises is having uh, tax holidays, that's very encouraging for women entrepreneurship. Third, uh, again, there is another tax exemption for uh, three wheelers and four wheelers in uh, production in Bangladesh for the next 10 years. This is not going to benefit the entrepreneurial ecosystem right away. But if we look into the uh, five rising manufacturing startups economy in the country, those are what? Japan, Mexico, India, Vietnam, and Singapore. All of them, and sorry, and also Malaysia. All of these six countries, about 15 to 16 years ago, they adopted such kind of manufacturing uh, policies, which now is affecting the startup ecosystem because there is a transfer of knowledge from European and American market when you bring in this type of uh, policies and these type of factories opening up in Bangladesh. It's a transfer of practical knowledge. The guys, the persons, the people, uh, who will be working in these factories in the next 10 years, they will be gaining immense knowledge, which in the next decade, they will be transferring that knowledge to the startup ecosystem of Bangladesh. So this, no, though not directly, but indirectly, is going to affect the startup ecosystem of Bangladesh immensely. Another good step, I would say, that uh, incorporating MFS and agent bankings uh, uh, into the, uh, uh, in the cap of the banking industry because the startup ecosystem of our country is heavily connected with online payment ecosystem. These things are actually encouraging uh, the online payment ecosystem. Yes, one can argue that tax has been imposed higher for the MFS, but still that is going to help because tax 
uh, not only uh, creates business, but imposing tax also helps to govern a company and industry as well. It also helps to regulate competition. So I think these things will also help. One of the things that actually strikes me uh, is the lowering the tax in microbuses. Uh, though this is going to affect the traffic jam condition in the city, but I, I assume there are quite a, a number of startups who are uh, doing ride sharing business based on microbuses. So that this might help them. And who, who knows if the traffic jam condition becomes very bad, probably tech startups who will be working on the remote working apps might flourish. My last point is a point which actually made me thinking. Uh, uh, and actually, it hurts me to see that 15% taxation has been imposed on private universities. I think, in my opinion, that is alarming for the startup ecosystem. Uh, why? Because uh, the, the startup, uh, let, let me share a small data first. We all talk about Silicon Valley, uh, but we never talk about the university which is close to the Silicon Valley, which actually pumped, fueled the growth of Silicon Valley which is Stanford University. If you look into the data, Stanford University has uh, groomed and gave birth to 1,448 founders, established founders. I think uh, there has been a bit of technical issues. Hmm. No. Sorry, I, I think I got dropped. Uh, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Sir. Am I audible now? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So going back to my point, uh, the, uh, Stanford University has 1,448 uh, startup founders who all together has raised investment of $47 billion. And not only that, we also talk about Israel, Israeli startup ecosystem, but we don't uh, talk about Tel Aviv University. Tel Aviv University is the driving force of Israel's startup ecosystem's rise. Tel Aviv boasts 800 plus startup founders and they together has amassed $16 billion of investment. Same goes for Harvard, same goes for Massachusetts, uh, MIT. All the universities are actually the driving force of startup ecosystem, the driving force of innovation. Universities are hot seat for private investment in R&Ds. So if we cripple them now, our startup growth, growth in innovation, I believe is going to be heavily injured. Just let, let's look back into our uh, growth in the career, in the uh, uh, working, white collar working force. I, I think the private universities in Bangladesh, if we do a research, if we engage our career department in that research, that how much has this private university contributed when the country needed BBS2 graduates, computer science graduates, and pharmacy graduates in abundance? And based on these graduates, the industries of pharmaceuticals, the industries of RNGs, the uh, industries in uh, startup are standing up. So now when we are getting into the fourth industrial revolution, crippling uh, the private universities, I think will be detrimental. So now if, I, if I draw a conclusion about my thoughts about what's in it, for the startups, I, I also think that a budget is not just a very complex planning, national fund allocation or policy guidelines. It is also an international branding of a country. I, and I believe that in our next budget, probably we will focus on more on the keywords such as startup, such as investment, such as ease of doing business, impact investment, green economy, housing, skill development, private research and development fund, com a competition commission maybe, and of course, water. So 
probably this is the first time uh, the Ahomele government has ensured political stability in the country. And I think this is, the, this is also the right time so that we, we become ambitious. I believe this budget has opened the door to, for ambitious startup ideas, but this budget also lacks to open the gateway for skill development and uh, for platforms to come up and invest in the startups and the new next generation business. I'm really sorry if I was very critical or figured out, pointed out to a few negative points, but NSU has taught me to be fearlessly humble and critically analytical. So, and we have always applied that all across our work systems. So thank you for having me. And I would pause here for if there is any other questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hirab Kaushar Bhai, uh, for that very, very informative speech about startups and analytics about how universities uh, contribute in the growth of startups. Uh, with that being said, I would like now, right now, would like to give the floor to our honorable vice chancellor, sir, Atibul Islam, sir, uh, to conclude the session with his closing remarks. Sir, uh, I think your mic is muted, sir. Unmute, Koren. Honorable Chair of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Azimuddin Ahmed, our distinguished speakers, Dr. Shadat Hussain, Professor Rashid Mahmoud Titumir, and uh, Erod Kausar. I heard very substantive deliberations from three extremely knowledgeable, articulate, and uh, critical thinkers. I thank you three for joining us in this forum. We have learned quite a lot. I would recommend that some of these speeches if we can get copies of them from the speakers, we distribute to our students uh, because they can be fantastic resources for our students in economics, in finance, basically in all social sciences. This year's budget we had previously a budget meeting immediately after the budget was announced where people from the CPD and uh, uh, some international experts uh, from various ministries and think tanks joined us. And we had a almost day long seminar on the budget. Uh, but this one uh, has added some new things. Uh, in the last meeting, we realized that this budget uh, I think the, the, the speakers wanted this one to be more people oriented. They basically said this is a COVID budget. It should have been more friendly towards the SMEs, the small and medium uh, enterprises, and they should have been more friendly or more helpful to the workers in the informal sector to the people who have become suddenly poor because of the pandemic. They, they have lost their businesses on the footpath. They've lost their small businesses in shopping centers. They have lost their daily working capacity. Um, and as uh, most of our speakers have emphasized, even if you have a budget allocation, this does not mean that the allocated money rightly goes to the intended people. It doesn't happen. There's, there was suspicion that there's lots of leakage uh, on the way. Uh, the thing that we, we must realize is that if the health sector does not function properly, we have got no hope in the world. Whether the schools will open or not, depends on the performance of the health sector, health ministry, health um, establishment. Whether the uh, factories can open depends on health. Whether trade can be done depends on that. Whether footpaths will have 
uh, businesses, uh, you know, small uh, uh, people uh, working, uh, uh, opening up shops there, depends on health. All the economic activities, educational activities, everything else depends on health. So this budget should have emphasized health very seriously. Um, I was uh, most commentators were rather disappointed that the increase in the health sector budget was not, not that much. But they all made the point that for some reason, our health sector cannot spend their allocated money. It reminds me of 1960s when I was a student. And Pakistan government used to give us an allocation. East Pakistan used to get about one third of West Pakistan. And then we could not spend half of that money. The money used to go back. So the health ministry basically is, uh, has obviously healthcare has improved. The whole world is improving and we cannot be uh, marching on spot. But the thing that you should concentrate on, focus on is why is it that you don't have enough beds? Why is it that the standard of treatment in the public hospitals uh, have not uh, has fallen, even if it's available to everyone. Why is it that the diet, the food in the uh, hospitals have fallen? Why is it that people are asked to go and buy their own bandages and whatever needed? Now, obviously, that sector uh, gets allocations, but it is not working efficiently and as honestly as possible. Uh, that, that is a conclusion which cannot be avoided, no matter how we want to dress it up. Uh, it doesn't seem to stack up that uh, the health ministry you know, uh, has been eminently successful in running the public health care system uh, or in getting enough vaccines for the people. Look, if we don't get the vaccines, we are not in business. We'll be in limbo forever. Now, it's not, I'm not blaming anyone. The world politics of vaccines is such that a country like us have limitations in uh, stockpiling them, in accessing them. Uh, what sort of economic policy should we take in times like this? Obviously, you have to go for expansionary uh, economic policy. If necessary, you have to print some notes and and as as uh, Professor Titumi said, boost the aggregate demand. That is needed. It's, you, you've got two responsibilities. Keep the population that are almost displaced from work, deprived of work, keep them alive, and then give them enough money so that they can spend that money, which then uh, will, 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 will be income to other people. So there is, um, and, and that's what most of the um, advanced economies are doing. We have no other way but to do it. Um, I think the health um, sector probably needs to be recast to make it more efficient, to make it more effective, uh, because everything depends on health. Everything depends on health. Um, uh, you know, um, um, I, 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 once again, I would say that particularly Professor Rashid Mahmoud Titumir's speech, it, it, should, it should be, uh, we should ask him to make it available and we should ask each one of our students to read it. And we should see whether they understand some of the assumptions, some of the phrases, some of the jargon that he uses. It's important that they learn it. They will get more in, in, in this one leads to go and learn than from reading a whole book. So let me underscore the point. Uh, the sort of points that Irad has made and uh, uh, Dr. Shadat Hussain has made. Uh, Dr. Shadat, you are in a very good position being an health economist. You should look into the efficient delivery. I'm sure you do. <laughs> And because you work in a government agency, probably you have to, to some extent, defend it, as you all do. But let us be very free and frank, and let us be critical of ourselves. There is nothing wrong 
in um, Atushuddhi, in Atushumalachana. There's nothing wrong about it. I'm not perfect. No one is perfect. No system is perfect. Because systems are human designed. So they can always be better designed than the existing one. So let's take it that way and uh, basically see how we can improve. And improve by tinkering on the edges will not do. We have to basically uh, make radical changes to some of it. Uh, I understand the problems faced uh, by the government, by the ministries. I run a small university. I face a lot of those problems at a smaller scale. Uh, the, the worst problem that you have, let us be very, very honest, is one of character is one of integrity, is one of ethics. If we were ethical, Bangladesh probably uh, would be you know, uh, 20 years ahead of where it is now. It is our ethics that's keeping us backwards. We are innovative, but innovative people become frustrated at every turn. I, I realized that running a university, how many people I can rely on? How many people are giving the 100% to the job? How many people you can trust in procurement? You have basically uh, uh, these things arising out of our character. It's not common to one place. It is in this society. So no use blaming the government. No use blaming a ministry. We collectively as a group of uh, human beings, we should improve ourselves. So the, the, there's one thing of, uh, you know, to talk about budget allocation. It's a very different thing, how effectively that budget is used. Uh, I must say that in the allocation of the budget, government has been very generous. A government, uh, uh, no, the, the budget documents, there will never be perfect budget documents. But by and large, the budget document is fantastic. The question is implementation of the budget. The question is administering that budget. The question is effective use of the money. The question is getting the best outcome from it. That's where we seem to be fall short of. I, uh, again, once again, I won't give a long speech. I'm not an economist, uh, but let's say uh, that the budget allocation is perfect. Can we utilize it uh, properly? Can we administer it properly? That is the real issue. I would thank all our speakers. You have been excellent. You have been so kind to us. You have been so generous in terms of your time. Uh, thank you so much. And our finance club, I'm sure the members, the, those who have joined, uh, have learned a lot. And I thank the club for organizing this. Uh, and this is a good thing. It's not immediately after the budget and, you know, talking hot. This, you know, what we discussed were the, in, in, a, in, a, in, a cold, in a cold manner, where the shoe pinches, where we could improve where we could have a better design. It's not criticizing anyone. It is basically having a, 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 a detailed look to improve things. Uh, I'll, I'll also thank our chair of the Board of Trustees. I know how busy he is for giving us so much of time this evening. Thank you all. Once again, my gratitude towards you. Thank you, bye. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chancellor, sir. I would like to conclude the session and I would like to once again thank uh, the chairman of Board of Trustees, Azim, Azim Muddin, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us your precious time. I would also like to thank Dr. Shahada Hussain, sir, for giving such insightful speech in regards to the healthcare sector. Of course, Professor Rashid, sir, for giving such a powerful speech and Irad Kausar Bhaya for giving us such a brief insight into the startups and their role in the entire budget. And once again, thank you so much. Uh, once again, Vice Chancellor, sir, for so beautifully handling the session and being and serving as the session chair.
Thank you so much to all our viewers and all the students of North South University who have joined this session and commented. Uh, we will sure get back to some of the questions and queries that you had shown in the comment section. And with that being said, uh, it's a good night from us. Thank you so much for joining our session. Thank you.